Coach and I are here at Bourbon and Baker again. Uh, really appreciate the time um, all season long to meet with us, but especially after uh, the season ended. Just thank you very much for that. Uh, I do want to ask first, and I talked off there with you about it, just about how, how the seniors in particular are doing. You know, that's the first thing I wonder about to, to have – everyone's career ends at some point and theirs did you know after a great season last week in San Jose just curious how those guys are doing well I mean obviously when you're in the moment it's so hard because the finality of everything hits you and it's emotional and you realize that's my last time wearing a uniform so that that was really extremely emotional a very emotional locker room um, from our players to coaches administrators because, you know, the people that know, know what went into those three getting it, yeah. this program to this point. So I think it was more so, you know, we wanted we wanted them to go out better. We wanted them to really go out together, and they didn't. Yeah. They didn't have the opportunity to lose together. And that's the unfortunate thing about how it happened and when it happened and who played and who didn't, is that we'll never know what those three looked like in – in an NCAA tournament game, really as juniors or seniors. Yeah. In particular for for Dean, he was certainly in no position to even really consider playing, obviously. We all know how tough it was for him. And I, it's a similar question that I just asked, but how has he dealt with it? Because he was the guy, of course, who couldn't be out there two years in a row. Uh, how is he handling this right now? You know, Dean, he, he struggled with it. Yeah. You know, Dean's got his, his mom's going to fight her battles on <laughs> Twitter, so, you know, he don't yeah. – he doesn't have to worry about that, but he's, you know, he's gonna. He he. It was hard for him. It was hard for his dad. You know, it's. Yeah. You know, it was hard for the family because, you, when you dream of doing something, and then two years in a row that dream doesn't happen. Yeah. And all you can say is that you know, as a sophomore, I played two games in the NCAA tournament. One of them was a playing. Right. And and you look at his career, and you and 20 years from now, people will say, "Oh my gosh, that guy must have killed it in a turn first team all league two years in a row." What did how do you play in the tournament? And, yeah. You know, you got to make shit up. You know what I mean? Of it's course. basically, that's yeah. what you do 20 years from now anyway. So, <laughs> you played great in those games. You know, yeah. that's, that's basically where it is with him. And it's sad. And he's such a good kid. And he's, you know, he's one of those dudes you dream about coaching. He takes it. He listens. He never gives you negative energy back. He does what he's supposed to do. And he doesn't complain. And there are not very many times good players, you know, have those traits and characteristics. There was a point late in the season where I know a lot of us thought that Barry Brown was rightfully the Big 12 you know, Player of the Year. Jarrett Culver gets it and probably des- he had a great year, probably deserves it. Barry never slowed down as far as playing minutes, playing hard, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, but did it, ever, did it ever wear on him? You know, I mean, the pressure and not, not in a way that he couldn't handle it mentally, but do you ever get bogged down physically going through the grind like that when he was the only guy out of that group who really never missed any time? Well, when you never missed anything. Right, <laughs> you know, right. I mean, he's... He, when they say Iron Man, he really is that. Never missed games. You know, he never missed reps. We had to make him get out of stuff. He would make you make dudes do stuff over. Uh, his attention to detail and being precise was is legendary. Yeah. You know, um, him wanting stuff to be done the right way. As he progressed, progressed and got older and really became his team, he learned how to lead it the right way. He learned how to run it the right way. And... Uh, to his credit, that's not normal where where somebody who has peers can can basically get them to fall in line like that. And the, the last one, of course, you know, Pearson and Pat, the other guys too, then the scholarship guys who yeah. matter a lot for that senior class. But, you know, Cam dealt with injuries throughout much of his career. I, I'm sure the loss didn't make it worth anything to him, but he played pretty well in San Jose, you know, in that game. He played really well the last two months. How, how good was he for you guys this year? And just what – What's people's lasting thoughts at Cam Stokes be a guy who took some stuff over the course of his time at K-State? Well, I think he scored, I don't know, 1,200 points, and he yeah. missed 30, 40 games, whatever, 30 games. I mean, that's probably 200 more points. So we're talking about a kid close to 1,500 points if he doesn't miss a game or he's healthy. So, I mean, it's about his career with us because he helped build it too. Uh, and in his own way, he made us get better because we lost him and had yeah. to reinvent ourselves. And, and and it was probably harder for him because he kept it kept happening to him. You know, it was every year, basically. Absolutely, yeah. For him, he had to sit out. He had to miss. He had to have surgery. You know, he's taking shots. He's doing everything possible uh, to be on the court. And sometimes as a fan, 
you fall in love with, with who you love and you don't like who you don't like on people's teams. Right. But when you when you when you really look at it, that little dude was really really good for us. And for a little guy who's frail like that to be a part of a Big 12 championship team, that's not normal because he's not a strong physical point. Like you know, like Frank Mason. Frank Mason was right. a was a stump. You know, he was strong. Cam is a twig. You know, <laughs> and for him to get as much done as he did is a credit to to him and how he was raised and his mom and dad and their approach with him. You know, coming here. I've asked you a hundred times over the course of this series to explain what that group has meant to K State, and you've done it every single time. But now that they're done, you know, three straight tournaments, back to back twenty five win seasons, an Elite Eight, a Big Twelve championship. Uh, that group accomplished what it needed to do, right? I mean, that's a silly question, but, I mean, could you have imagined when that four came in to rebuild the program or that three that that's what they would do, three straight tournaments, Big 12 title, Elite Eight, all those kind of things? Well, we just said let us coach dudes that we can coach. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the thing that we can do is evaluate dudes who can help us win because he wouldn't know who Wes or Marcus Foster were, and then, boom, here they are, you know, really talented, good players. and you know, when we get guys that do it the way we want them to do it and give them freedom and, and within the, what, you know, the things we do, then they're good. They, they turn into really good players. Yeah. Because you, you can say Barry and, 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 and Dean could have probably played on every team in right. our league. And then you can say the same thing about X. X probably could play on every team in our league with what he can do physically. And, and just those two, both sides of the ball and X both sides of the ball. So, you know, when you can get guys that other guys in your league envy and be like, man, if we had him, he, we'd be pretty good. But that's what we do when you get in groups, hey, your, your guy's really good, man. Yeah. You know, we talk about who you got and what, how'd you get him and where'd he come from. And he's good, he's gonna be really good. And when they were sophomores, we, we, we came back and said, how can we be picked this low when all those guys came back? Yeah. You know, and then, it was what I we kept trying to give this message out. Hey, these guys are better than that, than that. and they showed it. And, and being a fourth in a league that good that year, and then you know going to lead eight. But the thing about that year, it was three teams in the lead eight. That's how good the league was. Absolutely, four yeah. in a Sweet Sixteen. So you know, that's where you measure how good your players are against the league and how far it goes. And, now everybody's disappointed that we got one left right now. But right. we were the most injured league in the country this year. Yeah. And that's a fact. I mean, you can't hide from that. And the team in our league that was never injured is a team still playing. That's how it works. Absolutely. And, and, and that's how it works. And it's it's luck. It's timing. Um, basketball guys say it's your time. It's the, it's the draws. It's the seeds. Of course we know we shouldn't have been in California. Right. And of course we know what was set up supposed to happen in Kansas City, who they wanted to play North Carolina, but all of a sudden it's Auburn. Right. That's you know, true. Those things are not magical. Not those accidents. are man-made yeah. and they set that up. They tried to set it up. And you know, as kids, they don't know that. Our players don't even know what I would be hinting on. They wouldn't know. They're just yeah. like, why'd we play out there? <laughs> that was, that's it. But you know, it's good. It, it, our guys, you know, those dudes did it and they did it the right way and they're all going to graduate, and they've never been in trouble, and they've always done the right things. They've always represented Kansas State the right way. To me, it's sad that Dean Wade has to say in his final you know, interview that people didn't like us at first. That's a shame Yeah. because you should never, ever tell student athletes that wear your uniform that you, you don't like them, and he's not. And, and now, all of a sudden, you have to, oh, that was my favorite player two years later. It's not right. And that was the one thing that was disappointing. When I, I didn't I didn't hear I didn't read anything for about two or three days. And that's one of the first things I, I that I watched on Twitter. Is, yeah. I was like, because his mom said, "Read what Dean." Uh, you know, she's on there. Of but, course, yeah. But that that's hard. That's hard. That's a heartbreaker to me for him for him to even feel that way about his school that people didn't like him at one point in his career. Yeah. Just a mini rant for me. I think when people hear things like that, they think to themselves well, I like Dean Wade or I like these guys, and they probably did. But the fact that you have to say that or that Dean has to say that suggests there's clearly enough people out there giving you the feeling that they didn't appreciate them at first that it's worth saying. Right, and that's that, – sports are sports are fanatics. Like, right. I, I'm, I'm pissed right now with my Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Like, we, we lost no two Bell, really – No Bell, no Brown, no – I'm yeah. mad. Yeah. But – it's not to the point where I'm going on Twitter and saying crazy stuff. Right. I mean, I'm, I understand what it's about. It's a business. Hey, but these are kids. It's not, a, it's not a business to them, but it's a business to the adults. Yeah. And it's the, it's the love of the game for them at this point in their life when they're 
going. They're, they're not getting paid to, to, to hoop. They're not getting paid to put on a Kansas State jersey. How many, the thing is, how many times have you heard those three say, I love Kansas State? Right. I, no Kids idea. Kids don't yeah. love something, don't say it. Yeah. Kids just say, hey, I, I played there. <laughs> you know, I had a good time playing here. Move on. Those huh? dudes say it publicly a lot. On that note, I was going to ask something that struck me. You watch all the senior videos from Cam or Barry or Dean or their interviews. They always talk about wanting the next group to keep it going and keep it going. Even Barry, I can't remember, it was Barry or Cam said in the post game in San Jose that they said something in the locker room to the players after the game. How quick was that message delivered from the seniors to that group? And how do you think the younger guys, it's only been a few days, I know, but how have they picked it up from that? Well, it was point? from Barry. Barry yelled. At okay, Barry. yeah. I mean, was, yeah. Nothing, I mean, he just told them, you know, Barry's got a power cat on his. Bicep, you right? Know? I mean, he's Cardi's got a you know K State tattoo. It's, I've never like I've been a lot of places and coached some dudes. Never I've been somewhere where dudes have embraced where they are and, and got tatted up their school. Yeah, the, you know, I mean, and that shows you how much this place is meant to them. Outside of hoop, outside right. of it's the everyday walk of life stuff that makes this place really unique. I really, I, I don't. Li- I feel dirty moving on and talking about the future already because I don't want these seniors in this class in this season to, to get moved past this fast. But it, we can't help but do it. John Kurtz is sitting close to us. You said something earlier about coaches, you know, talking about players and saying this guy's good, this guy's good. I won't name names. But we both sat by coaches who were scouting in the Big 12 tournament, and we each heard different staffs talk about Cartier Jada and how big of a problem I think he's going to be in the future. Uh, I want to start with him. I know he didn't play great in San Jose, but he was fantastic in Kansas City. How do you feel about him being one of the guys who's going to become one of your lead guards and, and lead players in the years going forward? Well, you just think about him. Torn ACL. Right. Broken finger. And can't wait to put that uniform back on. Right. I mean, he hadn't done anything until Kansas City. I mean, you can't. It's not normal for you to just. You know, he can't. He could jog, but he couldn't move his hand. So yeah. what's the sense of jogging if you got to keep that thing, that finger set at right. all times until it's healed? So he really couldn't do anything until. I think a couple of days before we actually left were, and then he started shooting a little bit, and we were like, you know, it's too early, and he didn't yeah. listen, of course, <laughs> which, you know, good players are bullheaded. That's yeah. just the way. And he comes and he plays. You could really tell his conditioning wasn't there in California. Right. Like he needed to, where he needed to be physically. Um, at this time of year where you want your guys. Uh, but he's gifted. He's freaky athletic. He can make threes. Um, he can pass it. He can do everything you want in a lead guard for the future. And, you know, he's exciting. He's likable. Uh, and I think, you know, if anybody wants to be Barry, it's him. <laughs> you know, if anybody yeah. wants to mimic Barry's, all of his little stuff that he does before games, it's probably Cardi. Is he going to start bobbing his head during the national anthem? You but, think? you know, I don't know. But he, he's just very set the groundwork for how you are supposed to exist in our program. And that's what we hope those other guys you know, paid attention to. I know there's no answer to this right now, but uh, X is going to have a decision, of course. He had one last year even, too. Um, you guys remember a year ago we sat here and you really pounded the table and said, yep, Barry should go try. It's great. Is it similar for, for X? Is it something that you want all your guys to get the experience and see what it's like? Um, and how big of a decision is this for him? Well, I think, you know, Coach, we, we yeah, he has to because yeah. he needs to see where he is. And – as coaches, you have to understand what – if kids have aspirations for that and they are talented, you better let them do it because you want them to trust you. And you better let them do it because you want you want them to understand you think that they're that level. Yeah. And he has to do it, and he, he probably will. And, and it's up to him and his family. And, you know, obviously as tight as we are with them and as many games as they've seen in person of him actually play – you know, it's a, it's a family decision, and it's an Xavier decision. Right. Bruce Weber is never going to stand in the way of a guy who thinks he has a chance to be a professional, at least to test the waters and see where it's at, get in the under draft, uh, under, under, you know, underage draft advisory. So. Yeah. Uh, just assuming for, you know, safety of the question that anybody who has eligibility X, you know, specifically comes back, um, I, th- I think some fans see Barry, Dean, Cam, and gone and think, man, this, you know, that was it. We're going to see a dip. In reality, you know, you've got X, it'll be a three-year starter. Cardi, if he wasn't hurt, no, it'll be a four-year starter. Whatever. He's played a lot. Yeah. Cardi would be, <laughs> if he was healthy this year, would have been basically a three-year starter. Mac would be a three-year starter. Mike's played a lot. I don't know how many teams in the league have four guys coming back who have played as much as X, Mac, Mike, and uh, Cardi. 
So I assume to you guys, you don't think you know that this was it. That you probably can keep going forward next season. Well, you know when you the the thing about Xavier, he just he scored a thousand points that nobody knows. Yeah, we didn't run anything. We don't run a lot of stuff for X. <laughs> like he just gets points. That's a sign of a good player uh, because. When you look at the grand scheme of things and see how many points Barry scored, 17 on the wire, Dean, yeah. 15, Cam, and then the dude that nobody's paid got 1,000, that's not normal. That guy usually, that guy usually gets 500. Yeah. You know, the, the fourth wheel the fourth doesn't, option, yeah. doesn't do that. And to his credit, he's, he's figured out a way to exist with really good players. Now he's got it. And when you talk about you, you, you went from helping be the reason, now you got to be the reason. Yeah. You know, and that's him and Cardi both. You guys got to be the reason now. And how you are every day is the reason why the rest of them are going to do what we need to do to win. I'm sure you've already had some level of those conversations you've just talked about, but I'm, I'm curious, when do you specifically, whether it's Coach Weber or you or what, whoever it is, sit down and do exit type interviews? Do you literally give them a list of things to go work on? What's that whole process no, like? Bruce Weber was Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. did it Saturday. We landed. We were mad. and Coach wanted to get back in front of them and yeah. just – it's it's really it's hard to let those seniors go. Yeah. Because he knows if I if we try to meet two weeks from now, these seniors will be hard to corral and get a hold of, and, and they still be able to hold the fire with stuff. And, uh, right. He just is like, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. So Saturday we got to and he, and he met with everybody. And, uh, it's probably best because some people needed some love. We needed to love on some guys to be around them and not let them be by themselves. And, right. Uh, it's 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 a good thing, you know. We didn't want to be back home so soon, but we know this season was unbelievable. I mean, because you, everybody talks about other injuries and who didn't play, but nobody says anything about the stuff we endured and who we didn't have, and the resiliency that our guys showed uh, against our league. Yeah, and beat them and went on the road to places where that you know. Oh, we're gonna beat them. They don't have this guy, and that guy ain't playing. And we still found a way. Yeah, I mean, you look back again at the season. You just and you just hinted on it. There was a stretch of basketball where you guys went 16 and two, or no, 14 and two over the course of 16 Big 12 basketball games. You won nine straight. You went seven on one in your last eight Big 12 road games. During that stretch, when you guys were healthy, you won nine straight against everybody in the league. Like, how good were you guys? You you've coached great Illinois teams, great K State teams. When this team was at its best and healthy. How good was it? I mean, we were really good. I mean, because we did things never done here yeah. before. Because you gotta, it's the grand scheme of things. And everybody, and you're measured in March and all that. Right. And they have a measurement in March where I think Barry and Emma, they have seven games in the tournament, which is a bunch. And an Elite Eight with mm-hmm. one game away from the big, you know, the Final Four. But there's also a measurement at, at conference supremacy. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to say we won the Big 12. Um, in 2019 after an Elite Eight. Because most of the time, guys make those special runs and everybody's gone. Yeah, or you assume it's going to just happen again. guys, pro, league, pro, we had everybody back that we were smiling. And what we thought was going to happen, happened. We mm-hmm. were going to win the league. We felt that we were picked that, either us or them. Right. Say, and we did it. Regardless of how we did it, injuries, we did it. And that's coaching, too. As maneuvering pieces around and winning differently than when you have everybody there, and we we had to do that. And coach has shown that we did it in the NCAA tournament. We won different than we did the rest of the year. Um, when we go to Elite Eight, we didn't play the same way because we could. You don't have a big dude that you could throw it to at the block at the mid post or the three point line to get you a three. And it caught up with us this year, um, but. You know, Big 12 championships really important because number one, those are our guys. And let's right. be honest, people are going to say the first one wasn't ours. Right. And we realize that. But if you ask them, those are our kids because we won it with them. But this one doesn't make it better. It just validates that. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that one was important too because it hadn't been done in forever. And now, seven years later, we did it again. So it's not a fluke. That guy sitting over there in that other chair knows what he's doing. Right. So, I mean, that has to be understood. 
I know I'm jumping all over, you know, future questions, current questions, but Max, a guy, I think he had 14 and 12 in the last game. You've ta- taught us so much about how good he is on defense and, and pick and roll and that kind of stuff. I'm curious about him going forward. Do you guys see him playing a similar role? Is he still the five? Or he's a guy who shouldn't be able to shoot the basketball and yeah. face up? Or does he have any shot, depending on what you put around him, at playing a different role in the future? Well, Max got to shoot more yeah. jumpers. I mean, it's, he can shoot. And you know, he's got to he's got to take more jumpers, and he, you know, we get mad at Mac. Everybody gets mad at Mac, right? But Mac, bless his heart, is in there Sunday. He was in there Saturday after he lost Sunday. He's been there every day because he, you know, he feels sick. He, like he doesn't know how to act because Cam and Bray are his roommates. So that's, instead of being around tough, him, he's, yeah. he leaves. He doesn't know <laughs> what he's going to do without him because they basically taught him how to. Live in Kansas, taught him how to be a K-Stater. They've taught him. Now they're getting ready to leave. Yeah. I say, Mac, will you talk to uh, – I haven't talked you – know, he hasn't talked to Barry Cam. Like, it's – They know what to say to him, yeah. They're off now. They're, yeah. they're going to do their own things. He's on a different schedule. Yeah. Those dudes, you know, Barry's trying to, you know, get ready. Cam's trying to, you know, get get healthy enough to have a shot planned. And Mac's coming back. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a different lifestyle for all of them now. Yeah. And – Max kind of caught in a crossfire. He's like, man, I guess I'm going to go work out. That's kind of what he's been doing. A couple of guys, you know, newcomers we've asked about a lot, you know, Sean and Austin, both started to play more, you know, over the the final stretch. I think both – sometimes the numbers weren't great, but I thought proved that they were getting better. Like, how much of a jump can you expect from those guys? Sean, of course, didn't get here until you guys basically started school, but to have a whole offseason, all that kind of stuff, how much of a jump could those guys give you next year? Well, Sean is is super talented. You can tell when he – Right. I mean, he can shoot. Well, he can score all three levels. He's very athletic. He's big. He's taller than Barry, which he tells us every day. I'm taller than Barry. Right. And they have to do a measurement at least once a week. Are they back to back? back to back. Yeah. They have to do it once a week. Who's taller? So, <laughs> but Barry will say, "Who's better?" That's all that matters. <laughs> and it's the truth right now. And that's but Sean is talented. He's got a chance to really be good at what we do. He's never had a chance. You know, he missed. He had to do some academic work. You can't come in here and then get thrown to those wolves defensively. What they did to him when he first got here was criminal. Like, <laughs> they oh, I'm sure. made him question his ability to play basketball every day for the first two months. Yeah. Because they're older, trained, wild animals, and he's – here comes this little fresh meat just – be bopping along. Um, I was good in high school. Right. And every day they made him know this ain't high school. And now, you know, he knows they're gone. And he's smiling all of a sudden. He's happy. I said, <laughs> He's yeah, the man Cam, now. Yeah, Cam ain't dropping threes in your face. Yeah. And Barry ain't bullying you. Those dudes are gone. And so that's, that's the nature of natural progression on a team. When you have a good player who's behind really good older player, you ain't playing. Yeah, I mean, and that's the reality of it. And it was humbling for him, but we expect him to be, you know, even better because of that. Right. And then Austin gets a start against TCU. I, I didn't think he played particularly poorly against TCU. I just thought it didn't work out, you know, stylistically. But he's a guy who got more and more minutes down the stretch, brought a lot of energy. Um, I would think he's somebody, too, who could be a bit different player in his second year. Yeah, we got to get better up front. We know that. Those guys, got they got to get better. And some of it is they felt like they didn't. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. Dean was playing all the minutes that yeah. he wanted. Mac knew everything defensively. And the security blanket was Xavier Steve moving down. And coach was not messing with right. do you know the play or not. X, you're you're the four. You're the hybrid. You know, yeah. so and that's that's a coach's decision because when you're when you're a fan you don't see every day. When you see, like, X knows where everybody's supposed to be, one through four, both sides of the ball. Really, yeah. D knows where everybody's supposed to be, both sides of the ball, one through five. Barry knows where everybody's supposed to be. Cam, like, Cardi, those guys know that's why they play the most. And that's the beauty of what we do. When we, when you're in our system long enough, you're supposed to know what everybody's job is so you can do yours better. And trust that the guy behind you is doing his. And that's why, you know, and I didn't even know this. Like, we were talking today. I had no idea that – we were up 62-33 against Oklahoma with seven minutes to go. I yeah. didn't even know it. Yeah. Because I was, we were so caught up in, you know, trying to win. And Coach is like, you know, we're just like, Coach Rupp's going crazy. And I look at him like, oh, Coach Rupp, 30. Like, <laughs> chill. It's, it, we're good. We're going yeah. to get this one. You know, right. and that's the, but that's how they were playing. They didn't know either. Yeah. 
they were just playing and playing. They had no idea what the score was. And that's when you know you got a good team when they just play that way and it doesn't matter. They don't know the score. They just keep competing. I, I, I hate to single out um, an individual recruit because depending on the service you look at, Montavious could be the most highly rated. Uh, good news could be could be Antonio Gordon, could be Dejon Gordon. But I do want to ask about Dejon particularly because you have such a background in Chicago. For him to get Chicago Player of the Year, how big of an honor was that? And what kind of impact could he make coming in as a freshman? Well, a lot of pros are Chicago right. players. And I'm not saying he is, but what I'm saying is we're going to get a city tough kid for real. Like a dude who can get a bucket, a dude who can guard, a winner, an unbelievable kid. And uh, somebody, I, we're excited about him. Yeah. Because we know that he loves to play the game. And we know that he's a great teammate too. So those things usually, Lee, if you, if you play hard, you got a good motor, you usually do well in our system. We've been doing this for two years, and every question I ask you, you have an answer right away. So I'm going to try to try to stump you a little bit. Off the top of your head, to wrap this up, the second season of this, can you tell me a story from a road trip this year, something like this that hasn't got out there, that just tells who this team is, whether it was you know anything like that um, about these guys we haven't heard yet you can share with I us? I think the biggest thing about those guys on the road the night before, they it's kind of bougie a little bit. They have to have smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> smoothies? Banana, strawberry smoothies. Yeah. That's their that's their go to night. No matter where you drink. are, they have to go no find matter, one. No matter. But we make them. Our, our strength and condition go. Oh, okay. We, we Got rent. It. We get the, they get the blenders out from the kitchen. They have to have strawberry banana smoothies. That's <laughs> that's our thing the night before. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Well, I just want to say thank you. The time you've shared all year. I hope we can come back to some of this off season. Maybe bring some you know some kids in for grad school again. And just congratulations on the year. Twenty five wins, back to back years, Big Twelve champs. I think people look back at it with a lot of uh, a lot of fondness, and I really appreciate it. Thank you.